How are you? You get a hole as you Good afternoon. On behalf of the family, I want to thank those of you who are friends for taking time to join with us today to celebrate Robert's life because that's that's what we're here to do today. We want to remember the life that was lived like I was sharing with uh, Ann, I believe it was yesterday, we don't want to focus on the last few days, last few weeks, last few months. It's, there's a whole lifetime to remember. And that's, that's what we want to do uh, here today. Uh, I'd like to share the Shepherd Psalm with you. I think it's very appropriate at this time. And I think it's very meaningful when we think about what David is saying here. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I remember, I guess it's been some months ago now that I went to the house and visited with Robert and Ann. Uh, Robert had a question about his salvation. And we talked about that. And uh, I reassured him that day that uh, he was one of the Lord's and the Lord was his shepherd. And I hope that stuck with him. I hope he had that, that, that confidence all the way. I didn't get back to see him and I regret that. David went on to say, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, there can be no shadow unless there's light. What David is saying here, I know that you're with me. The light of your presence casts that shadow. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. We stand today in the presence of our arch enemy, death. But I'm here to tell you that it's nothing to fear. For death is very much a part of life. Every one of us gathered here today will walk through that portal one day. The, the important thing is to be ready to walk through that portal, to be ready to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Robert's name was called, and he stepped into the presence of the Lord. He goes on to say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What David was talking about here was being in God's presence forever. And that's where Robert is. He has stepped into that eternal presence of God in a way that none of us can relate to in this life. But once we step through that doorway, that portal we call death into his presence, it is eternal. It is forever. Pray with me. Father, we come into your presence just now. In the name of Jesus, we come to lift up this family, these friends. We ask you, Lord, to be with them. We ask you to embrace them. We ask you, Father, to whisper words of comfort to their hearts. May they know that uh, you hold them in your hand today. 
May they know that you are with them as they walk through this valley. And may they know that you are the light that shines upon the path so that they do not stumble nor fall, for you will bear them up. Father, we ask you to be with them this day as we bid our final farewell, as we remember Robert's life, as we celebrate that which he lived and share together some memories. We ask you to to be with this family, comfort them, guide them, direct them, keep them in your care throughout this day and the days ahead. We commend them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I had mentioned to Ann that uh, we'd have an opportunity for folks to share memories. Uh, does anyone here have a memory they'd like to share? I'll share a memory. All right, come on up here, uh, Patty. <laughs> Stephen was about 11 years old, <laughs> and his Uncle Mac took him fishing on one of the creeks here in West in, um, Prince George. There was a big tree that laid across it, a big fat tree. So they're walking across it, and Stephen falls in. Stephen's on his back, picking his legs and his feet and every which way. Help me, help me, I'm drowning. <laughs> Mac turns around and looks at him. Well, stand up, boy. <laughs> Stephen stood up, and he was in water this deep. <laughs> okay, somebody else share something. What about at work? Nobody? He was a funny guy to be around. I mean, he always had jokes. Yeah, he had a sense of humor. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely doesn't juggle on him without being juggled, juggled back by him, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, you say he could take it and he could dish it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he had a heart of gold, though. Mm -hmm. Someone else. Yeah, I just want to say also that um, Robert was one of my co-workers. I met him. He and I, we've been in each other's life for about 16 years now. And... Uh, his life was definitely his eulogy. And the way he lived is the way um, he will be remembered. So, you know, a lot of people have, uh, a lot of people can say something about Rob, and when they do, it'll probably be the same thing. So, you know, we know that phrase, and every, nobody, tell, everybody, oh, no, everybody tell the same lie. So, <laughs> if you tell the, you know, something about, you know, about Robert, It'll probably be the same thing or very similar because he's always been true to who he is, who he was. Um, so you couldn't help but to love him. Um, and I I read the Bible myself a lot. And the Bible says that, you know, uh, kindred spirits do know one another. And as long as you be true to who you are, you know, uh, um, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And, and so God is good. God is liberty. God is love. And Robert walked a lot in his way with love. And, and so he carried the spirit of the Lord with him. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we people we may not even get to know God, but because He loved us so much, He said that He loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son, even people that don't know Him. So He loves us just enough. And Robert, His life depicted love in a lot of what He did, a lot of what He said. He always bent over backwards to help someone when He could be hard, barely help Himself. Um, I remember His last few days or weeks, rather, working with us. He was ill, gravely ill, and we didn't realize the magnitude of His illness. Um, and so we just joked and we just, you know, just went about our day like we normally do. Everybody at work every day, you know, you go through your life hustling, bustling, and you never realize what a person is going through, you know, until, you know, until, until the, the light comes out. So my, my memory of Rob is he's always been a fun guy, a loving guy. You know, um, he's always had kind words to say. Um, <laughs> he wasn't perfect, just like everybody out here. Nobody's perfect, but he was a good guy. So I'm going to remember him really for the good times that we share. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. And I like what you said. His life was his eulogy. Absolutely. Because nobody's going to remember anything said here today, but we're going to remember the life that Robert lived. Someone else. Stephen Morris went home to be with the Lord on August 30th of this year. 
He was a graduate of Prince George High School. He was a very hard worker, employed at uh, Amcor Specialty Cartons for over 20 years. And I've heard some of his co-workers uh, uh, testify to the fact that uh, he was a uh, he was what he was. And I think that's important that a man is what he what he appears to be deep in his heart. He enjoyed fishing. We've heard a fishing tale from. Someone, how he uh, learned to fish at an early age and enjoyed fishing. He enjoyed watching wrestling. Did he get into it? Did he get on the edge of the seat and, and try to help pin him down? Yeah. 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 And then he he was a real wrestling fan then, and he loved spending time with with his family and with his friends. Uh, and of course, uh, he, he was preceded by his mother Shirley Ann Morris and his father Stephen Lee Morris. And uh, those who are left here to remember him is his wife Ann, uh, his brother James, his children uh, Clara and Ryan, and uh, Sierra. Sierra. Pardon? Sierra. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sierra. Thank you. Thank you. And so, where's Sierra? Right over there. I apologize. Wasn't looking at what I was looking at. I wasn't seeing what I was looking at. Uh, uh, also, he has aunts, uh, Florence uh, uh, Withrow, uh, husband James, and Sheila Clater, husband Ralph, and of course many cousins and friends. And uh, I noticed lastly, and you mentioned this to me, to mention this to me last night, to, to mention Bocephus, yes. uh, his dog and sidekick. And uh, we talked about. Bocephus looking for him. Mm -hmm. And I have learned over the years that animals mourn and grieve also, especially if they're very close to their masters. They look for them when they go. Let me share with you the words of Jesus. On the night that he was betrayed, on the night that he was arrested, the night before he died for our sins, he sat at the table in the upper room with his disciples. He knew what was coming. They did not. He was not concerned about himself, but he was concerned about them. And I believe his words to them are very appropriate for us here today. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions, that is, many rooms, many accommodations. What Jesus was saying is there's room for everyone. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And that's what happened. Robert's accommodations, his room, was ready. His name was called. I believe that door is open between this life and the next life, and, and angels come in and escort us into the presence of Jesus himself. And that's where Robert is just now. He says, the way I go and where I go, you know. And Tom was like so many of us today, so many folks who say, you know what, I, I, I don't know the way. I, I don't know where I'm going. Jesus answered that question. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. He says, no one comes into the Father's presence but by me. He said, if, it had not, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him. So we know that Robert is in the presence of the Lord today. That the God had made plans and preparations. Death is something that is scheduled. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. He left at the appointed time. Of course we think it's too early but it was according to God's timing. So we come today to return to the earth that which has come from the earth. The scripture says that man was created from the dust of the earth, and God breathed into that dust the breath of life. This is not Robert here. This is just the, 
the earthly house that Robert lived in, the, that which he traversed this world uh, in, was this body. Robert is with the Lord, and Robert is in your heart. So uh, cherish those memories. May you be comforted by the fact as we come now to commit Robert back to the dust from which he came. Let us pray. Father, we come now to commit this earthly house in which Robert lived back to the ground from which it came. We come now to ask you to gather this family and these friends to you. Comfort them and strengthen them. Be with them today and in the days ahead as they make the necessary adjustments. May they know that you are with them. May they place their hand in your hand. And may they allow you, Lord, to comfort them day and night. Keep them in your care, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It is with sincere, sincere gratitude that the family will have me to thank all of you all here today for your presence, your loving acts of kindness, your phone calls, and any way of love that you express to this family during the loss of their loved one. On behalf of the management and the staff of the J.M. Wilkerson Funeral Establishment, it is our hope and our prayer that you have seen our care, our concern, and compassion. Please know that we are praying with you and for you. And if there's anything we can do in the coming days, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Again, we thank you so much for allowing us to serve your family. This will conclude these services, and our prayer is that God will bless each and every one of you all. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.